Okay, it is officially noon, so we'll go ahead and get started now as people continue to filter in a little bit. Um, so officially, good afternoon, and welcome to our Future of Work webinar series from Colorado State University Global. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate um, you being here, and hopefully you find it to be a very useful uh, overview of CSU Global's new programs in AI and machine learning, as well as some oversights and career outlooks of these very important and exciting new industry trends. Um, so CC Global is a premier provider of online education for modern learners, and so we're just happy to welcome you here to this career relevant series that hopefully can help you in your career development and pathways for workforce and, and continued skill training and options for uh, ways to advance in your career. So but before we begin, I want to remind you of a few things. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see that there's a Q&A button. At any time during the presentation, please go ahead and submit any of your questions you have there, and we'll answer as many of those as possible at the end of the session. You'll also see a chat button down there. You feel free to use that to introduce yourself to panelists and other attendees. Just make sure you go to that drop down and select both panelists and attendees so everyone can see your chats. And finally, after the webinar today, we'll send you a copy of the recording uh, with a short survey that we ask you to to fill out so we can continue to improve these webinars and make sure that they provide you the valuable information you're hoping to accomplish today. So, again, welcome for jo to join us today and um, get a little bit more information about CSU Global first for those who aren't familiar with us. Uh, CSU Global is the nation's first and fully online and independently accredited state university and it's part of the renowned Colorado State University system. Now, we're, since we are fully online, it's designed with classes that provide a superior online experience, which is especially relevant in today's world of um, needing more remote learning and online options. Uh, it provides 24 seven support, dedicated advisors, courses are created with the best tools and industry practical learning. So we make sure that it aligns with those career goals. Um, finally, it has no tuition guarantees or it has a tuition guarantee and no tuition rates increase for the past nine years and no student fees and accelerated eight week sessions that are offered year round to make sure that it fits into your busy life as working adults and modern learners. So with that, and one of the topics that is incredibly valuable today is again, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And so with me today, we'll be presenting our program manager in this program, for, uh, Dr. Charles Lively. We'll come on in just a minute. And we, what we hope to cover today is um, again some brief information about our new specializations in artificial intelligence and robotics and machine learning as well as give the industry and employee trends and how CSC Global's program might be able to prepare you for these future work programs. Before I turn it over to Charles I just want to provide a couple of quick quotes up here. Um, you can see that this is a topic that is incredibly relevant right now. So the idea that AI is providing a new industry revolution, you know, like we saw with, um, you know, the, the machines and everything that started with the first industrial revolution and then technology that started in the past uh, 50 years. Um, so here are just a couple of quotes to see that this is an incredibly relevant topic for the future of work and we're going to see continued advancements and um, with, with these logs continue to ex increase the speed that these things are, are working towards. So with that, I'll turn it over to the true expert uh, to talk a little bit more about the industry at large and our new program. So Charles. Thank you, Andy. Um, yes, we can advance to the next slide. And so uh, why is AI becoming so pervasive? Uh, the technology behind AI and machine learning has advanced greatly with advancements in computing technology and memory advancements. And this has allowed for it to persist and permeat into other industries. These industries include transport, where we have uh, autom automobiles and fleets that are now using the technology for self-driving and more efficient utilization of resources. We have healthcare tasks that are being automated, which also includes uh, improvements to diagnostic, diagnostic procedures, to wearable technology and the automation of other medical tasks. Uh, within marketing and sales, we have, uh, we have analytical and uh, machine learning technology that's able to improve the customer experience and also provide for predictors to predict uh, what a customer might be interested in. Uh, 
And then also in finance, we are able to provide for more accurate prediction of sales and services and trading using AI and machine learning model, models. And so the technology has been able to uh, penetrate various industries and the industries that use AI technology is, will continue to grow over the next five to 10 years. And so with this great demand for AI and machine learning, the job outlook also looks very good. Uh, for uh, salaries, the average salary for a person with a, a title such as an information research scientist would start almost at 120K. Uh, job demand has greatly grown where there was a 1.41 billion uh, market in 2017 and now we're at an 8.81 billion predicted market by 2022 and that's going to continue to grow exponentially as more and more industries uh, not only embrace but figure out the most efficient ways to use AI and machine learning and so this will also allow for AI spending to grow up to 50, 57 billion by 2021 so the growth will continue thanks to this positive outlook in, in the use of the technology. And so someone that has skills and training using AI and machine learning can pursue various uh, positions. Of course, there is an uh, AI or machine learning engineer or AI and machine learning scientist. You could be a uh, data scientist who is able to interpret and collect data and provide for a useful analysis of complex data sets. Uh, you can become a BI developer where you're able to create applications that are able to provide the information that data scientists need to interpret data sets. Uh, you can also become a big data engineer or big data architect where you are designing and planning the, the environment that will not only uh, utilize the AI and machine learning algorithms, but also the systems that are used to analyze that data. And then you can also be a AI research scientist. Uh, this re does require more advanced training, but with a, a foundational knowledge in AI, you can be trained up so that you're creating new uh, algorithms and procedures that are able to improve existing AI and machine learning uh, technologies. So we will talk about the, the new masters in AI and machine learning, but first I'd like to provide you with an overview of the various IT programs, technology programs that we do have available here at CSU Global. At our bachelor's level, we have a bachelor's of science in information technology that, that students can uh, enroll in. We also have a bachelor's of science in computer science as well. Uh, we also have a newly launched Bachelor's of Science in Cybersecurity program as well, too. Uh, that isn't on the slide, but it is a, a very recent new launch. At our master's level, we have a Master's of Science in IT Management. This degree program is aimed towards a professional that is going to be looking to take up an IT leadership role uh, in, in an organization. Uh, the Masters of Science in AI and Machine Learning is our newest program and allows for you to apply uh, AI and machine learning technology and concepts and with real world applications. At CSU Global, we also have various certificates and specializations that are available. Um, some of the various certificates that we have available um, include computer programming, cybersecurity, which is available both at the undergrad and graduate level, IT management, IT operations, networking, and web application development. Uh, we also have various specializations, and you want to keep in mind that any certificate can also be a specialization, and the difference in a certificate versus a specialization is a, a one, one course. And essentially, you want to keep in mind with a certificate is eligible for financial aid or DOE funding, while a specialization is normally paired with a degree offering. So for our specializations, we have AI and machine learning. We have AI and robotics at the undergraduate level. We have virtualization and cloud computing at undergrad. 
And again, all of the previous mentioned certificates can be specializations. So what will you learn in the master's program in AI and machine learning? Uh, I'm, first, I want to just say I'm really excited about the development and launch of this program. It's been uh, a year in the making, and we've recently launched. And to me, the program provides you with a holistic overview of not only computer science and software development principles, but of course, the, the key technologies in AI and machine learning. So a student that enrolls in this master's program will develop uh, software and programming development principles. They'll learn advanced concepts in programming with Python. Uh, Python is the, the foundational language that will be used throughout the program and in about 80% of the courses. So students that graduate will have a, a strong knowledge and mastery of the language and how it's used. Uh, of course, the program allows for you to tackle advanced concepts in AI, machine learning, and neural networks. And each of these courses and concepts are, are, are a progression where AI provides the foundation, machine learning builds on, upon it, and neural networks uh, builds upon machine learning. Uh, the, the program makes use of various AI and machine learning libraries such as TensorFlow. So we focus on uh, not only providing you with a, a theoretical understanding of the concepts, but the degree program is heavily focused on the application using standard libraries that a, a company or employer will expect you to have a mastery of. And so here we see that uh, the program, the master's program is a 10 program, uh, the 10, 10 course degree program, 30 credits, and uh, foundationally it's all focused on in, in advancing your uh, technical capabilities as a software developer and uh, AI machine learning specialist. So you start with uh, principles of programming. We also have management courses as well as ethical uh, leadership and software development courses. And then we get into the bread and butter of software development, analysis of algorithms, operating systems, artificial intelligence, computer vision, machine learning, and we cap things off with what is probably the most important course in, in the, the degree program, the AI and machine learning and neural, applying machine learning and neural networks capstone. And this will allow for you to bring all of the skills and knowledge that you gain throughout the degree program together in a uh, 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 employer worthy uh, portfolio capstone project. And so here we just want to provide you with the understanding of how you're able to uh, learn programming and AI concepts at the, at the, at a, in an online environment. We make use of interactive resources that not only explain the theory behind the concepts, but allow for you to interactively uh, provide code, ex, code segments, and those code segments are or compiled and allowed and executed while you're in your ebook. So this is an example of some of the interactive functionality that we have integrated in all of our courses. Now we want to keep in mind that this is an advanced degree and we do have some prerequisite requirements. Uh, most importantly, students should have a, a good understanding in discrete mathematics and that is uh, expected uh, that you've taken an undergrad course in discrete math. Also students, students should have an advanced course in probability and statistics as well. Uh, generally students that have a strong math background are able to do well in programming uh, computer science and AI related programs. And so for students that are interested in the specialization, it's important to note that it provides for a good introduction to understanding the AI and machine learning concepts. And uh, to a certain level, you will gain a, a strong knowledge in Python, as well as the basic principles of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and neural networks. 
uh, and there will be a widespread exposure as well to TensorFlow and other available machine learning libraries as well. And so the specialization allows for you to learn these concepts through a sequence of four courses that are a subset of the degree program, principles of software development, uh, design and analysis of algorithms, foundations of artificial intelligence, as well as principles of machine learning. And so you want to keep in mind that our program is optimized for the online learning experience. Uh, all of our degree programs are 100% online, and we make use of innovative technologies such as uh, interactive and multimedia lectures, digital textbooks, uh, real world simulations, uh, and as well as embedded uh, tools that can be utilized. All of our faculty are not only highly credentialed, but they also have recent professional experience. So you, they are able to convey to you how the technologies and concepts that you're using in the class are used in the real world as well. Okay, um, I think at this moment we'll open the floor up for any questions that any of our attendees might have. Yeah, thanks, Charles. And we had a, a number of questions come in, so thanks for that brief overview. I do want to go back for just a quick second, though, before we get to our questions and, and focus on um, one thing that I think is, is important to understand the difference between the specialization of the program. So as you see here on this slide, we've listed some of those programs that are a really good fit for this. As the industries that Charles mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, um, project management, data analytics, you know, finance and accounting, those areas are incredibly um, or are drastically changing as they're using more AI and machine learning sort of uh, pieces there. So the specialization provides you with the foundational knowledge in order to connect that with the other areas. I do want to mention that the master's degree program is only a 30 credits master's degree program. Is that correct, Charles? Yes. It does not have a specialization within it. So it's a little bit shorter than our other master's degree programs are, which are traditionally 36 credits, which means you can get them faster because it's really focused in on those areas of need to make sure that you can accomplish um, your career goals uh, in, in a very technical field, right? It's very advanced in terms of the, the types of information that it covers. So just wanted to clarify those differences that this is one of the master's degrees that does not have a specialization requirement. All the other ones can utilize the MI or the AI ML um, specialization as part of uh, customizing your learning to meet your career goals. So um, just wanted to clarify that first. And with that, we do have a a great number of questions coming in, some, some fantastic questions. And Charles, I'll let you field these since you're the expert here. But um, as a current undergraduate student in computer science, is there any benefit to getting an undergraduate specialization in the area of AI and machine learning prior to going into the graduate program? That's a very good question. And you want to keep in mind that if you do have the undergraduate specialization or undergraduate um, courses, the graduate level is just at a, a higher cognitive level. So you'll have some foundational knowledge, but you will be pooled at a much higher level at the graduate level. So it's, it's definitely would be beneficial. And, and the undergraduate specialization is actually AI and robotics. Am I yes, correct in that? that's yeah. correct. Can you describe a little bit of that difference, why that one's robotics focused compared to machine learning at the higher level? Well, you can go two ways from a foundational standpoint with uh, AI and robotics. It uses AI technology to help um, guide uh, motion and events that are used to control robots through technology and software. Uh, for our master's program, we focus fully on uh, the predictive aspects associated with uh, AI and machine learning uh, from a standpoint of someone would be able to take that and apply it to um, a robotic industry, but not necessarily in the, the aspect of being able to control a robot, which is kind of a, a focus for the our undergrad program. Great, thank you for that clarification. And that's something that, you know, in the future we may consider adding on to our um, master's program as well. Great. 
I want to get into a very conceptual question before I get into some specifics that have also been asked about the program itself. But what's your opinion on how COVID-19 will impact the career outlook for AI and machine learning? Well, it's really when you look at these type of pandemics, uh, technology industries typically aren't affected. And if anything, it makes it um, pretty much a lot easier for someone with a, a technical background in programming and AI and machine learning because the need is still there. Industry is still being driven, whether it's, you know, diverting interests from um from maybe something in a store to online environments like Amazon who are also using the technology in their warehouses as well as for delivery of packages. So that's the benefit of being specialized in a highly technical area. Typically during any type of um, recession or economic downturn, technology career fields are minimally impacted. Yeah, I, mean, I think you make a great point in terms of it should actually increase. So uh, when we were doing research for this program last fall, before the pandemic really hit, um, there were, it was a predicted that almost 133 million new jobs to be created by AI in the next three years. Um, when you take that, and then that also meant that over 75 million jobs, so you know, half that number, were going to be displaced because of being replaced by these new technologies and AI and everything else. Um, from, from my position in marketing and engagement and what I'm seeing out there with the industries that I speak to, uh, we're seeing that number just continue to grow incredibly fast because you look at manufacturing and, and areas where they can utilize, um, they, they no longer need to have people in individual spaces. So I think this really will continue to to explode in terms of the number of career growth, but we no new statistics are out yet as far as I can tell from that. And Charles, I don't know if you have any more updated numbers from COVID, but um, yeah, growing, growing very fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think Python will stick around as a predominant language for machine learning? And if we learn everything in Python, will we be able to work in any capacity that requires something other than Python? I think Python will be around for a while based off of its ease of use and um, pervasiveness with um, some of the big companies such as Amazon and Google. Um, it's hard to predict how long another, how, how long a lang language will stay around, but traditionally once you have mastered one language, it's fairly simple to pick up another. I, I learned my first programming language was C and C++. And when I started working with Oracle, I learned Java and have since picked up Python and various other languages, so. Um, will this master's degree prepare us to pursue a PhD in machine learning or something similar? Definitely possible. Um, it provides for a good foundation. Um, it's not a, a research focused degree program. It's more application though. So that's something that you also want to consider. Um, but typically if you, you know, if you enter a PhD program, as long as you have a, a master's from a solid institution, you're, you're good to go. Now it leads right to the next question, which uh, I can help with as well, but I'll let you answer. Is this graduate program accredited? Uh, we are accredited by the Higher Learning Commission for all of our programs at CSU Global. Um, we're looking for other specific industry um, backed uh, accreditors, um, but with AI and machine learning being so new, there aren't really a lot of accreditation guidelines focused on that, but that is something that we'll, we'll definitely be pursuing. But because it is accredited by HLC, it is also eligible for financial aid. So yes. keep that in mind as well. Um, how long does it take to complete the master's in AI and machine learning degree program? Well, it's a, um, a 30 credit degree program and typically students will take uh, two courses per term. So it's feasible that it could be completed within a year. That's great. A um, couple questions about the prerequisites here. So uh, if I don't meet the prerequisites, can I still apply? Yes. Um, what would happen is you would be enrolled um, as a provisional student and you would be required to complete those, the two undergraduate courses or one, depending on what you're lacking in before being able to go into the degree courses. 
Great. And the follow up on that is if I don't meet those prerequisites currently, um, can I complete them as part of my undergraduate program here at CSU Global? Yes. Great. Yep. And again, it's elective credit. It would be because it's not, those courses aren't listed as part of your core requirements. So you can work with your students as support counselor as well if you have questions about how it fits into your overall degree program to make sure you're maximizing your number of credits there. Um, and if I don't have a 3.0 GPA, would I need to take Res 500 for this program? Yes, that's a standard requirement. Okay. What are the most common undergraduate degrees for students applying into the Masters of AI and Machine Learning? Most students have a background in either IT or computer science or um, cloud computing. Any others that are a little less technically focused? I'm thinking of math, you mentioned is a great foundational piece, statistics. Mm -hmm. Are those helpful for students that are interested? Yeah, and actually, typically, most students now in math or statistics or are familiar with programming concepts, um, such as programming in Mathematica. So that's it's also most likely if you have a strong background in math, you'll do well in computer science or AI. Great. Um, here's another question, it's somewhere on that, along that same lines, but um, this person has a bachelor's degree in a field unrelated to AI and computer science. Would you recommend a second bachelor's degree before going into this program? Um, but I, I assume it's kind of related on just being able to pass those prerequisites and make sure you have a technical understanding. Is that true? Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily think a, a second bachelor's would be needed as uh, long as you have the prerequisites and it would be helpful if you had maybe taken an introductory programming course as well. Um, that will set you up for success. So Charles, I'm not a technical person, but can you briefly explain to me at least, and, and this is not a question coming in, but um, like how much of this is similar to coding versus different skills? So is this just an advanced skills or a very specific kind of coding? Or could you describe a little bit more about just AI coding and versus a regular computer science sort of program? Well, it's using uh, mathematical and AI principles and you're interactively coding them. So it's kind of a combination of theory um, and then taking the, the actions that the theory uh, the notes and putting it into a, a program and then using specific libraries to make that easier. Um, so it's not uh, coding or developing courses or developing concepts from scratch, but you'll need to know what uh, functions in the TensorFlow library or, or any other ML library should be used to apply the theory. Thanks, that helps me get a grasp of it because it just seems so so future in my mind. So thanks, appreciate that. Um, so is it feasible to work full time while completing this master's degree? How many hours per week on average would be needed to uh, dedicate to study in the coursework? I would say typically it, you want to be able to dedicate, um, and again, this is based off of your um, level of understanding, but I would say at a minimum 10 to 20 hours per week. Um, I do have students that work full time. They'll do some studying or whatnot during their lunch break and then do another hour when they get off of work and then you'll have the weekends as well. So it's definitely possible. And are there GMAT or GRE requirements for admissions? Uh, no, not for this program. For any program, it's easy global actually. So even if you're interested yeah. at the, um, in another master's degree program with this is specialization, none of our programs require either uh, admission standards for graduates. Just a bachelor's degree, again, with a 3.5 GPA, um, or if you have lower than that, you may be admitted provisionally. So um, just talk again with an enrollment counselor or student success counselor to, to determine your ability to be enrolled. Okay, so since students have just recently started to implement this type of degree program, do you see that the program curriculum will change while the student is working through this degree? It's a great question. Um, well, actually, we at CSU Global review and update our courses every 12 to 18 months. So that is very likely. And with techno as technology changes, especially for a technology program, we update our courses accordingly to to keep them fresh and uh, in alignment with industry. Yeah, every course is reviewed every 12 months, I believe is an important piece to remember, especially in the technology field, right? Yes. 
Uh, and our last question that I have, and I know we're just approaching time now, um, and it's just what does it mean to be admitted provisionally? So great question. That is related to um, you're fully admitted if you meet all the admissions requirements. However, to be admitted pro provisionally, if you don't meet the GPA requirements from your undergraduate program, you may need to take that prerequisite or complete a statement of perfect uh, statement of purpose in terms of um, why you think you'll be successful in this degree. So we have a lot of students that are admitted provisionally and they're incredibly successful in their programs. Um, it just requires uh, a conversation again through the enrollment admissions process to make sure that you can meet those requirements for a graduate program here. So I handled the last one for you, Charles. I think I can give people another minute to, to jump on, but um, great questions from everybody. Uh, if you have ones to follow up, you can see that on the screen there are email addresses. So if you are a new or potential student, uh, feel free to email enroll at ccglobal.edu. And if you are a returning student, an alumni, or a current student, um, you can reach out to your student success counselor individually or use re-enroll at ccglobal.edu. EDU, um, as well as use the phone numbers and the website has a bunch of information that um, perhaps we didn't get to cover today uh, or or just as a refresher there. So feel free to use those as needed. So um, thank you, Charles. I sure learned a lot. I, I always appreciate the chance to get the, to learn from you. And um, I want to thank again all of our attendees for joining us today. Uh, and we look forward to hearing you if you have any additional questions or needs. And uh, good luck on your future studies and career growth.